Alright troops, apologies, this isn't a new video, but one of my first being re-uploaded. As it was one of my first videos, I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, the audio was completely scuffed, it's only playing through one ear for half of it, uh, and it, just, it was just really annoying me. I couldn't leave it up, not working properly, so I'm having to re-upload it. Um, so, for the 10 people that actually watched it, I am very sorry, this isn't a new video. But I am releasing this in tandem with new content, so you're getting something this week, if that makes sense. But yeah, on with the show! So, this project all started when I was listening to the Green Dragon podcast. If you haven't heard of them already, I would definitely give it a bash. They really made the Lothlorien playstyle sound incredibly interesting, whether that's defending with a pike block, or picking off some pesky orcs from range who get too close to the trees. However, what really drew me to this was the podcast thumbnail photo the Galadrim were painted in this incredible green armour with bronze chainmail and white clothing. I really felt this scheme gave off big wood elf vibes so I had to give it a go myself. I couldn't find any sources on how these were painted so I went about it with a bit of guesswork. I originally thought it was a green contrast paint over a silver base coat for the armour. So I used Dark Angel's green over Mithril silver. I wanted to give them my own twist so instead of the white clothing I made it red. So this is what I came up with, it was at this point I realised that it wasn't contrast paints over a silver that gave the effect in the photo, as I found another one here that you can see the armour was just painted green. It was at this point I decided to kind of go my own way a bit, as I wanted to play a bit more with the contrast paints over the silver base coat. I decided to do a new test model as I wasn't completely happy with this one, as I felt it came off a bit too uh, Christmassy. It's just nice to meet another human who shares my affinity for elf culture. Right, before we commit to anything, let's just check with the master what he thinks of this paint job. What do you think, Bucky? You like it? That's a good paint job, isn't it? It's class! Don't eat them, you fucking idiot! So, all I did was flip the red and the green clothing and go for a normal wood spear. I did like the bone, but I felt that was more of a high elf thing than a wood elf one. I really like this new scheme, so that was me set to go ahead with the project. I do realise I must have some kind of addiction to painting red cloaks, as this will be my third elf army with red cloaks now. Hair colour. Right, now this is where we get very geeky and I bring out my true colours. I don't know if it's because I'm a ginger man, but we need to set the record straight when it comes to elf hair. So I see a load of elven armies painted up with just pure blonde hair. However, this isn't right, as most elves of Middle-earth are remnants of the Noldor, who have brown and red hair, or the Teleri that have dark or silver hair. The Vanyar are the only elves who have golden hair, but they never left the Undying Lands apart from to fight in the War of Wrath. Only the elves who have Vanyari, Vanyarian ancestry will have a chance at being blonde, such as Galadriel. So it's best to paint your elven armies with a mix of hair colours in my opinion, not just pure blonde. Unless, of course, you plan on doing a first stage Vanyar army. Right, that's my salty ginger rant over. Thank God for that. Let's move on with the matter at hand and on to speed painting this army. As much as I hate painting horses, I thought it'd be a great idea to show you how I painted these up using a cavalry model. This means I can not only show you how I paint the infantry figure, but also the cav in the same tutorial. So the first thing I did was paint up the base with a rhinox hide before dry brushing it with Screaming Skull. The next step is to make sure you cover all the armour and the sword with myth mithril silver, stormhose silver, I got it right this time. I then give the sword a quick coating of null oil before using the contrast paint militarum green across all the silver armour. We then go back to stormhose silver to dry brush the armour. Try and go against the grain so it picks out all the detail. This will give us a nice finish for the armour that we're after. So I then apply Rhinox Hide to the hair, the sword hilt and the skin. I would also paint the horse completely in Rhinox Hide at this point. I then give the chainmail and the abdomen plates a coating of Balthazar Gold. The skin was giving a coat of Bugman's Glow as well. I then paint the sword hilt and any leather on the miniature, whether that's the horse or on the model, in Moonfang Brown. The horse tails are given a quick coat of Steel Legion Drab. However, when it comes to the horses, you can paint them any colour you like. 
Then it's time for our liquid skill shade. We take Agrax Earthshade, we cover the entire horse, the chainmail, the skin, and any Moonfang Brown that we have placed upon the model. In this model I've given the elf Moonfang Brown hair, but as I said in my earlier rant, you could use any colour you wish, as it's good to have a mix in your armies. Right, while we wait for the Earthshade to dry, I'm going to make myself a nice cup of tea. Always use your drying time wisely, whether that's to work on another project, build some other miniatures, or just make a nice hot beverage to warm the old cockles. Just try not to mix it up for your paint water. Oh, for fuck's sake, not again. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Fucking metallic as well. Now that our liquid skill has dried, I get some Cadian Flesh Tone and highlight the miniature's skin. Then onto any of the green cloth, I use Strachan Green as the base layer, before giving it a shade of Atonian Camel Shade. This is finally highlighted with Skarsnik Green. Now we're onto the most important part of the miniature, the cloak. This is going to be in red to contrast against the green, and as it is the biggest and most eye-catching part of the miniature, I'm going to use a lot more coats, layers and washes to make sure that it stands out and looks the part. So first up is our base coat of corn red. This is just a base so that the Evil Sun Scarlet that we use in the next coat sticks to it better. So I used blood red contrast paint as the shade in, for my army, but if I was to do it again I would use Carol Bird Crimson. The only reason I didn't was I forgot that I actually had a pot of it already and I didn't want to pay silly prices for a new one. I then apply another coat of Evil Sun Scarlet but this time I leave the recesses shaded. I then highlight this with Wild Rider Red. You could technically stop here but as this is the centerpiece of the miniature I really want it to pop so I'm going to give it a second highlight of Troll Slayer Orange. Then onto the old faithful Retributor armor to paint anything on the model that needs to be gold. This can be sword hilts, buckles, etc. I then use the technical paint Soulstone Blue to pick out the center gem on the shield. So there looks to be a little gem in the center of the armor which I've highlighted as well. And on some of the miniatures I've used it on the swords to give the glowing blue effect. I just wanted to give a little bit more contrast to the miniature, so I thought this whole stone blue would be a nice after effect. It's then onto the most important part of the miniature, basing it. So I've got a multitude of grass tufts and flowers here, I then apply these at random to the base. I tried to cover most of the ground but leave a little bit showing through. And then a quick moonfang brown rim and I can add this to the rest of the miniatures that I've finished. So the only thing I did different on the Galadrim Court Guards was to put a yellow trim around the cloak. I then did a gradient from the red down to a white to have a kind of transition effect on the hair. I then gave them a red gemstone on the helmet instead of blue. I tried the blue but it just didn't look right with all the yellow on the miniature. Right, so that's the easy bit done, whether you believe that or not. Uh, I have all my plastic kits done, I've got my heroes and I got Celeborn done from years ago and he ties in well with my Cladrum Court now. I have enough miniatures to make up 800 points but Games Workshop's Made to Order came out and it has a bit set of Haldir's Elves in it. So in the FOMO is real, I had an army of these when I was a kid and I just have to get another set so that's another 20 Elves on the way. But it's the nice old metal ones unlike the Galadrum Court which are the fine cast noodle, noodle spears. However, two days after me buying the made to order, I found my old Lothlorien army from 15 years ago in the box in the attic. Thought it had been lost to time, but you know, hey ho, there it is. This means now I have to paint double the amount of Haldir's elves, which is a lot considering I've already painted 45 elves. So this is everything I found. An old plastic wood elf set that I was going to use as Gondolin Citizens, but I never finished that project. Probably the same amount of Haldir's elves that is in the made to order. Some of these old, really old wood elf metals, 
uh, which I might use for sentinels, and two thranduils for some reason. I think I'll definitely paint strip these and start again as Although I used to love this old colour scheme, it's a bit done to death. When I was a kid, for some reason, I was obsessed with purple and cyan, and I painted everything in this colour scheme. From some Wood Elves, to Numenorians, some Heroes, some Gondorians, Rohan, and even this random canned dude. And that's just Lord of the Rings, never mind 40k and fantasy. However, all the stuff I found in the attic is going to have to get paint stripped. I used to use isopropyl alcohol and methylated spirits, but it just it required too much scrubbing and you had to leave them for a long time for the paint to come off. And sometimes if it's really old paint, it just wouldn't budge. However, I found this bio strip stuff and it works on plastic and metals and it just whips the paint right off in one go. It's absolutely fantastic. I just leave it in it to soak for like 5-10 minutes and then the paint just melts off it. So here are all the miniatures after being paint stripped. All I need to do now is attach them to their bases which I scrub the sand off of. They also get a sand on their base and then they are also ready for one big giant base coating session with the made to order stuff. I like to get the whole army ready and base coat it at once because in Scotland you get about four days a year where it doesn't rain. So I've base coated all these elves. Uh, I've counted them and I have 40 Haldir's elves, including the big man himself. There he is. Turns out I've got five Haldir's for some reason. Well, we've collected five Haldir's over the years. So they'll be getting converted into stuff. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know what, it would have been a childhood dream to own this many Haldir's elves, but I can't help but think, what the utter fuck am I doing with myself? Why Why does anyone need 40 fucking Haldir's elves plus 26 or 24 Galadrim? Oh my Christ, and I've also noticed that because it was dark last night when it finally stopped raining, I've missed bits, so I'm going to have to go over them all with black paint to get the final base coat done because it's Scotland so it's going to be raining for another 10 years now Here we go <laughs> So I've got pretty much everything done apart from uh, the red and the green I need to do some have the willpower to do any more. A couple of gingies in here, represent, represent. Just far too many to do. Why have I done this to myself? Oh, so gonna have a bit of a break and then I will get back. So I'm down to just the red cloaks and maybe some little touch up highlights and it's the longest and hardest step and I'm just struggling to get started here. I've been staring at them for a couple of hours and oh it's gonna be an absolute slog to do 40 of these. Anyway let's try and get some motivation shall we? Oh, there we go. Two more to go. Highlight one and a cheeky. I don't know if I'll do it. No, I need to. I need to. The cloak's the main part of the miniature. I need to do the second coat, man. Oh, this is going to be something else when I get them all done. Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> Stop it. Get some help. So, that's that batch done. I'll tell you, I'm never doing a batch of 40 again. That nearly fucking killed me. And they're, still, they're not as good as the, the plastic ones because certain steps were rushed and I kind of avoided doing things like highlighting all the hair and stuff like that because I just I couldn't be fucked. But they look alright. They do the job, you know. When they're all masked up, they look better. Um, but yeah, that's everything else. I didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't get rid of I couldn't do the banners, I just couldn't face them. So I'll do them later. I really like the idea of doing all the pyjama elves, different colours and like autumn and summer and spring and stuff, but if I be, I just, I'm done, I'm checked out of this project at this point, so I think I just want to get them done, so I'm going to do a really easy base coat in green, and then dry brush, maybe a lighter green, and then camo shade, and then that'll be it. So I finished off my, my wee green men here, and I thought I'd tell you how I'd done them. Uh, cheap and nasty, as fast as I could, as I said, I'm completely checked out from this project. Uh, in the future I'll maybe highlight the skin a bit because it, the faces on these plastic wood elves are just, they're not the best, there's like the detail is just, they're probably the least detailed models Games Workshop do man, there's like, but anyway, uh, so I finished these off, it didn't take very long, uh, here's all my sentinels, so they look a bit right now like the old green plastic army men if you remember, if you ever had those when you were a kid. And they look for a fucking quick and nasty paint job. They don't look too bad. And it fucking. I'm not going to zoom in on them, because if I zoom in on them, you'll see how bad they are. <coughs> but uh, if I say out here, they look like wee pyjama elves that you'd see running about in the trees, wouldn't you? So yeah, that's 25 done, 24 done. And then on to my 12 sentinels, and then. My second Gladio, and that's me. Everything done. Woo! Fucking like 3,000 points of a fucking Gladio. What a stupid idea that was. Right, guys, that's me finally finished painting everything. Um, apologies, I've had to make a load of terrible jokes to fill up the space between the last few clips because, being a complete novice, I managed to delete all my time lapse photos of me uh, painting up the army, so that's fantastic. So for Galadriel, I just wanted to kind of blend her in with the rest of the army. This is her kind of evil magic -y form. I made her red instead of the blue, like in the films. As if she's just cast blinding light. I'll be honest, I've not painted up the second one as I just need a break from painting elves. So I decided to leave the old Thrandro model in my old colour scheme, just as a throwback to my old method of painting everything. I'm going to use them as a storm collar as I don't have one of the new official miniatures. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching my descent into madness over the last few days as my jokes just get worse and worse. So I'll leave you with some shots of my army. I have just found out that the tournament has been cancelled due to the old Omnicrons. So after all that slogging through this army to get it tournament ready, uh, it's not even going to get to play in the field of battle. However, I do feel an amazing sense of achievement painting up all of these elves in such a short space of time. I think it took about two and a half to three weeks to get all oof, 100 models done. I will be doing a separate tutorial for the wood elves when I get some Mirkwood Rangers. So if you enjoyed watching me absolutely lose my mind painting all these elves, please stay tuned for more as I've got a new Minorian project that's currently breaking my head. Thanks for watching everyone, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to give my bell a good old ring. Wow. Man, I need a better brain. Oh. Just recycle the one I've got. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> nothing, just making a... Stupid joke about a cup of tea. But that's not a cup, that's a bad pan. It's a bed pan? Uh huh. Or for pish? Uh huh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh.
bloody big pot of piss under the bed. Shut up and get it lifted out. Wait a minute. How have I bloody do this? <laughs> Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> oh! Oh! 